Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 134 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we're going to make a little trinket box, and we are going to use these big checkers that we got in the checker game from um, the Dollar Tree. So that's all we needed to get for today, and actually, as I was pulling things out, I got to thinking, we really didn't even have to um, buy the checkers. We could have made our own little solid rounds like when we made our buttons and we just glued layers of cardboard together so if you can't find the large checkers you can make your own rounds and you can make them any size that you want them to be so um we also use these rounds to make the top of our um our spools when we made our, our well it's not a thread spool but it's like a thread spool um twine <laughs> I couldn't think of the name of it when we made our twine spools um, we made the same type little disc so you can make a disc of any size for this and this is just cutting the same size circle over and over out of um, chipboard which is just any kind of cereal box or any kind of box and um, so you could make your own and you don't even have to get the checkers but this is what we got for this week I like the little crowns on the end of them I think that they're just kind of cute but so what we're gonna need is we're gonna need two of these little rounds and then we're going to need a piece of cardboard that's going to go around the round. Now, we need to know how big this is. And for me, I mean, you can use a tape measure if you want to, um, you know, like a fabric tape measure, but I don't have one of those. And for me, the easiest way to measure something round is just go ahead and just any piece of paper, just go ahead and hold it on there, wrap the paper all the way around till it meets itself. Just like this. Well, it doesn't want to go around. I need to set it down. Wrap it around till it meets itself. And then right where it meets, just fold it back. Okay, so now we know that that is how long or how big around that checker is. So that checker is, let's see how long it is. I'm going to grab my cutter here. It's about five and a half inches long is how long to go all the way around the checker. Now we're gonna need a lid on our box too. So I like to go about an inch for the lid. So this was five and a half inches to get all the way around. So I'm gonna need a piece six and a half inches long so I can go all the way around and still have an extra inch for my lid. We're gonna make our base box part, I guess you would say, of our little box. Um, we are going to make that just out of any kind of chipboard. This is just some kind of a snack box. So I'm just going to cut that off. And then I know I need it to be six and a half inches long. So I need to make sure that this box is actually six and a half inches long. I'm going to rip off this flap. I want it to be a solid piece of cardboard. I don't want it to be, I, I don't want to have the flaps on it. So if I hold this here, yeah, this is seven and a half inches long, so I'm good. I can cut off this bad part right here. There we go, and then the width of your box can be any width. This piece from the fold to the part that we cut is well, let me just grab a ruler. That would be easier. What a unique idea, use a ruler to measure with. Okay, from where we cut it to where the fold is, is not quite five inches. So that's how wide I'm going to make this. I'm going to just cut it right along there. Get rid of the rest of this box over here. I'm going to just line this. I'm going to line that fold up. Go, actually, I'm going to go just inside that fold, line the top of my cardboard up with my line here. Just because I got so much bulk over here, I can't really get it up tight on the top. But I want to make sure that it's straight. So I know that this cut line is straight. I'm going to line it up with that black line there and just cut that fold off. So now this is how wide that our box is going to be. And then we're going to cut this whole thing five and a half inches long. Just 
just like that. Okay. Then what we're going to want to do is because we know that we have five and a half inches is how long um, we need to go around our checker. That will get us all the way to for the two sides to meet up. Well, you need to have an opening. So we're going to leave an opening on the top of our checker. And you can make that opening any size that you want it to be. I'm going to say an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down an inch and a half. This is five and a half inches long. So I'm going to score this right at four inches. And I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to score it on the other side too. Just to really make sure that's a good score line. Now what's going to happen is as this wraps around our checker, it's only going to come about this far so that we have an opening on the top. So this is going to be our lid. So we're going to fold it back and forth really good. We've got our little burnisher here so we might as well actually use this. Burnish both sides and then turn it the other way like this and do it there. And you might even want to do this a few times because this is your lid and you want your lid to be nice and um, nice and Foldable, I guess is what we want to say. So, and then you will decide whether you want the cardboard on the outside. I like the this cardboard on the inside because I don't paint the inside of my boxes. And um, so this is going to be my inside. So I'm going to want this whole thing to curl this way. Now, sometimes it's hard to curl a piece of cardboard and you can just work it like this. But the easiest way that I find to curl a piece of cardboard. It also works to straighten a piece of cardboard that's curled. I'm going to see if I can do it. It's not going to be easy to do here on my box. I usually do this on my counter. But under my paper here I have a book, so that's hard right there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hold on to my cardboard and I'm going to just pull it down over that corner just like that. You want to get your lid too, and actually, sometimes it's easier to curl it before you actually score your lid. And I'm going to do it this way too. And the part that you want to curl in, what you want on your inside, is the part that's going to be down against your. You can do it on a table corner, countertop. I'm doing it on a box and a book. So you can do it on anything that's really solid that has an edge on it. And what that does is that's just going to curl it and make it just much easier for you to curl it around the checker. Just a minute, I dropped. dropped my checker and I dropped a lot of things. Okay, so now we've got this. So now see, it's already got a little bit of a curl in it. Then you can do something like take something that's round. Now you wanna make sure that it's not tapered like some glasses, they're smaller at the bottom or wider at the bottom and then bigger or smaller at the top. You wanna make sure whatever it is that it's the same distance the cap doesn't make a difference because we're not going to push on that but you can just use something that's very round and just roll it on there too because now you've really stretched those fibers and it makes it easier to roll it otherwise sometimes when you're trying to roll it like this especially if you just try and put it around the checker um, what's going to happen is it's going to like kind of get little crease 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 as you go so you just want to do that and you want to just loosen up those fibers you want to get this just kind of working on it just a little bit. You want to just get that nice and round so that it doesn't pull against you too bad. And then we are going to glue our checkers in here. Before we do that, we are going to sand the shiny part of the paper off of our box because your paint doesn't want to stick to that very well. And you don't want your paint peeling off. So you don't have to take off the whole picture when you're sanding something like this. You just need to take off the shine because the shine is what the paint won't stick to. This also gives it a little bit of um, grip for your paint to grip to. And so you're just going to want to, I usually go like one way and then I go the other way and usually that works out good enough. I'm trying not to shake the table too much. Across, I'm going to go up and down. And I'm going to do the lid. I need to change my sandpaper because this is getting full of the dust, the sanding dust. And so I'm just going to 
that, and then I'm going to go this way. And there we go. I do have a wet paper towel here so that I can wipe this off because you don't want that sanding dust on here when you go to paint it. Wipe off the other side too because it gets all over. And I'm going to also get it off my surface. Okay, so can you tell my husband does the vacuuming? He just brushed it on the floor, but we won't tell. Okay. Now that we've got it all sanded and ready to paint, now where we sanded the crease, it's a little bit looser now. That's that's a good thing, you know, because you want that to be nice and loose. You can always, if you find that you've gotten it too loose, or it rips or anything, you can just put some washi tape on here. And when you put washi tape on something like this that you're going to use as a spine, um, put a little bit of glue under it and then put the washi tape on. And that way it will definitely hold. It's not going to come up. And you can use your homemade washi tape that you make with masking tape. That will hold really nice and good. But put the glue on it still. Um, you can also, if you want to, you can cut this flap off and then washi tape on it after you've... Um, after you've cut it off, then washi tape it back on there um, for an even more flexible um, spine. But this really does pretty good um, for the opening and closing. Alrighty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, the uh, Fix It All adhesive that we got, which is it's kind of like a um, like a gel super glue. You just want some kind of a glue that will stick to plastic. Um, you know you you don't really want to use your um, uh, tacky glue for this because tacky glue works great on you know paper to paper which cardboard is paper but I don't know how well it would stick on the plastic now if you made your own little um, discs then that's just cardboard and then you could use your tacky glue and that would work just fine holding it together because again you're going paper to paper so we're just going to put this on here like this. Okay. And then I'm going to just let that sit for just a second because I want it to tack up a little bit so that it will it'll hold uh, faster. I mean, it's going to hold good, but I don't want to have to hold it for a really long time. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my checker and I kind of want my little crown on my checker to be towards the bottom. So I'm going to look at my box and I'm going to say, well, this is about the bottom. Now the bottom, remember that this is going to overlap. So the bottom is a little closer to the front than it is to the back. And it really doesn't matter exactly where you have it. Um, I just like to try and make them on both sides, make them about the same. And then we're just going to wrap this on here like this. And this is the fiddly part because that um, gel glue is a little bit slippery, I want to say. It, it Things like to slide around on it. So we're just going to put this on here, make sure that we get it on here really tight, touching all of our sides. And then just get a little piece of parchment paper. Should have ripped this beforehand. Okay, you want a little piece of parchment paper to go where your lid is on that checker so that it doesn't stick as your lid comes around. Now, see how my lid's just matching up and barely matching up? I did something wrong. So what did I do wrong? I was supposed to cut it five and a half, right? Plus an inch. I was supposed to cut it six and a half inches long. How long did I cut it? I cut it five and a half inches long and that's why it just meets up. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna set that aside. And I do have one here that's already cut. And this one is, let's measure it to make sure that I cut it six and a half inches. I forgot my lid on that other one. Okay, this is six and a half inches long. And then I've got my score line in here. I scored it at four inches. And 
um, I need to sand it really quick. So the thing is, is that you don't want to glue it together and then you can sand it after you glue it together, but it's a whole lot easier to sand it before you glue it together. And I've already rounded this one and I've already got my score line in it. But I know the not that fun watching the sanding. Now this one I made, I think I made it five or five and a half inches long. Just because I like to make them all different sizes that just, you know, it's kind of interesting. You can make two or three different sizes and set them together in a little grouping and, you know, keep your little whatnots in there or use them to send little gifts in. So I used to make these out of cedar um, inlay. Which, which is flexible, and um, it was a very thin cedar with paper on the back, and they were gorgeous. So, but you can really make this, decorate this up any way that you want to. Once you get it done, you can put lace on it and paint it and just do all sorts of things. Okay, we're going to call that good. Definitely need to find my wet, damp paper towel though, because I don't want that sanding dust on there. There we go. Okay. So now I am going to. This is still four inches, which is what we had on the other one. See, it's, it's the same right there. It's just that we didn't have enough of a, of a lip on this one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take our, our glue. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm just going to put this on here. And then once we get this wrapped around, we're going to put... A rubber band on it and then that's going to hold it and then you're going to want to let it sit for a little while to let it get good and dry but I do have one here that's dry All right, I'm going to what to do with me I'm going to wipe off the top of my the threads on my glue because otherwise you can glue your top right on it. If you ever glue your top on your adhesive and you're going to throw it away because you can't get it open, at least so that you can use it that time, take a needle. I have one here. Take a needle and just go anywhere into your the side of your thing. Push the needle in there and then you'll be able to squeeze your glue out of that spot. Now sometimes um, that will seal itself up and you'll be able to use it again a few times. But if you're going to throw it away anyways, um, put a hole in it and that may go ahead and get all solid. After you've used it that time, you might not be able to use it again, but at least you'll be able to use it one more time. That one time. All right, so let me find my other checker here. And let's try this again. So don't forget to... Um, Don't forget to measure the extra, however much extra you want for your lid. Okay, so I'm gonna just put that in there like that. And then get a piece of the parchment paper. And just put the parchment paper where the lid's going to be. Just like that. And make sure that your checker or whatever you're using as your, as your bit. You can use poker chips for this. You can use whatever you would like to that's round for this. And actually, you can use anything you want to. When I used to make my cedar boxes, I used squares. I used triangles. And then the, you know, what I had was basically light cardboard. Um... 
kind of. It worked the same anyways. Um, but because it will shape, if you just do it carefully, you can shape it around any any kind of an end. So if you want to make a square box, just, just get a solid square. You could get a square piece of wood or whatever. I'm just kind of holding this to give it a chance to to set up just a little bit before I try and get the rubber band on there. Um, but yeah, so you can do any shape that you want to. I used to even do, most of the time actually, I did odd shapes. So I would just cut out of a half inch piece of plywood, I would just cut some kind of a funky shape flat on the bottom. And then I would just wrap around it. And you can, so I hope that's kind of understandable. And then we're just going to take this guy. Did I, yeah, I did put that one in the right way. So I want this to be right about there. This side is dried longer, so it's going to go ahead and grab a little bit quicker for me. But yeah, and the only thing is, is that these very top corners right here, they want to lift off. And that's why you need to um, put the rubber band on it for a little bit. And you don't, don't want to glue your lid down, so that's why you need to put a little bit of parchment in there just from the fold of the lid out and just get it out of your way. Put another rubber band on it. And these rubber bands are rubber bands that I got off. They, they put them on our mail when our mail comes. Um, so, but we did get rubber bands for our Build Your Stash series. So these are not the ones that came in that, but we do have them in our stash. I just couldn't get to them. They were kind of buried. Okay, so there we go. Now this is gonna dry for just a little bit, and then it's gonna come out, and it's gonna look like this. Now this one, I just took the rubber bands off because I forgot to bring rubber bands, so I took the rubber bands off so that we could put them in here. But, so this is what we're making. Now we've got this cute little box, and it opens up like this. We've got a really nice inside, and um, then we just have to, we're going to have to decide how we want to decorate it and how we want to close it. If you're going to use it like to send to someone in a Happy Meal or something, you can always just tie a ribbon or something around it. Um, what I like to do is just use a couple of buttons and a piece of string. And so I have the buttons that we got from the Dollar Tree a while back. And I really need to decide, like, what color do I want to paint it? I think I'll paint it first, actually, before we put the buttons on. That would be smart, huh? And I really like browns, and this is a, this is spiced berry, kind of a maroon color. Those are my favorite types of colors. So that's what color I'm going to choose to do this box. And then as far as the ends go, you can leave them black like they are, or you can paint them. And, um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Did I shake it? I don't know if I shook it. Always make sure that you shake your paint before you use it to get all those binders and everything and the pigments and everything mixed back together, especially if they sit a long time. I store my paints upside down and I do that so hopefully no air will get in the top and they last a little bit longer. That's my thinking on it. But we'll just get some paint on here and and um, get a closure on it so you can see what they look like. But they're just really, they're fun to make. And like I said, because you can make them in all sizes, because your outside is flexible, and the biggest thing is just, um, you know, when you're doing something with cardboard, let's say you want to make a triangle-shaped one or, you know, triangles and squares are a lot easier because you can, you can use your bone folder and just put a crease where you want it to actually fold. But, like, if you're doing round or some kind of an odd shape, just remember to just loosen up your cardboard. Get it moving before you actually try and put it around what you're trying to go around and it will work so much easier for you. I'm going to show you the inside of this one in just a minute because this one, I forgot to do that before I started getting it ready. And so I'll show you how the inside looks just a little bit creased. Get 
just get this last little bit on here. But there, now that the, um, the box is covered up, doesn't that just already look cute? And we haven't even really done anything with it. But see, on the inside of here, and I don't know if you can see it, but there are little creases, little kind of wrinkles, and that's because I did not stretch the fibers in the cardboard before. Whoops, I don't want to do that. Um, before I went ahead and tried to round it around here. And I already had the glue on it, so then I just had to kind of work in the middle. So there we go. Now we'll let that dry, and then, like I said, you can stamp on it with your black stays on and your little stamps. You can put lace on it or whatever. I'm going to let this dry for a minute, and then I will be back. Okay, I'm back and our little box is dry. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide how we wanna close it. Now we have Velcro in our kits, so you could put a little bit of Velcro here and a little bit of Velcro here, and then just um, you know use the Velcro to hold it shut. That works really good. You can tie something around it. That works really good. I like to use the string you know, to wrap around it like this. So um, I'm gonna do that with buttons and um, so what I've done is I took a white button and I just painted it with the same color. I did put a second coat on this and I painted the button with the same color um, that I had there. And the way I did that was I just, um, I did the back side just because it was white and I didn't want that to show. Um, and then I just held it with my pokey tool. Put your pokey tool right in the hole and then just hold it in place so that you can paint it. And then when I got all done and I wanted just even brush strokes across it, I just put my pokey tool on the table like this just to hold it from moving and just brushed my, my brush across it just once like that so all the strokes were the same. So that's how I painted that. And then what I wanna do is to, I wanna give that a little bit of interest. And so I'm gonna just use the black stays on because that's a permanent ink and I want something small, and because that is so small, I'm just getting one of my stamps here, because that is so small, I don't really want an actual design on it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, this is one of our, one of our stamps that we got um, from Hampton Arts from the Dollar Tree, and it has a little bit of a swirl right here in the corner. So I'm gonna choose that swirl because there's, there's quite a bit of little tiny parts right there, and I'm gonna use that to stamp on my button. You want something that's kind of small. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go to this side over here. You want something that's kind of small um, with a lot of detail because this is so small. So you need the little, all those little details for it to show up like anything other than, you know, just maybe a line or something. Or you could, we have some little tiny butterflies or little tiny hearts, you could do that too if you want to. But because we have to sew through the middle, I didn't want to do that. So put that aside, close this up really quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Hmm. At least, I, oh, here's the other part. I couldn't find the top to the stays on. I am dropping everything today. Okay, so, so this is what it, well, the light's not on it very good. I know the light's on it too good. But that's what it looks like. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but um, it has some nice detail on that button instead of just being red. So that's going to be our top button. And I'm gonna have my string that sticks out that you're gonna wrap around off the bottom. So this one is just gonna be sewn on and that's where the string will wrap around. And so um, what I wanna do is just cut a little piece of cardboard or something to stick behind it. You could stick another little button behind it. Um, you Just something to make it stick a little bit away from the back so that the string has a place to go. And like I said, I'm just gonna cut just a little piece because I don't want it to stick out. I don't want it to show. And I just want a little bit of depth to it. So I just took a little piece of the cardboard that we made our box out of. And I'm just gonna cut it in a circle 
actually I'm gonna it's gonna be more like an oval hopefully I'm cutting it big enough to cover both holes because I want to be able to sew through it to hold it in place so let's see if that's yes that will go ahead and it will catch those holes now the one thing that I'm looking at because I forgot that there was a, a dish in the back of this button that's just going to be level with the back of the button so I actually need more than that in order for it to lift it away from my box we need to lift it up just a little bit so since I have the dish in the back I'm just gonna make it fit because you're not gonna see it at all okay so there we go so now what I'm gonna do I just have regular needle and thread for this one and so I'm going to just come through my piece of cardboard this just little piece of cardboard folded in half just like that and then I'm going to put just a touch of glue on that knot and it's going to glue these two pieces of cardboard together because um, you know this is going to have a little bit of tugging to it we want to make sure that we're secure so that's going to really hold that knot in there and it's not going to go anywhere so then I'm just going to yeah if I can get a hold of my needle sewing is not my strong point that's for sure let me just go down through the through the hole and then back up through the hole I'm going to do that one more time Well, before I do that, I'll add the other one. And basically, that you, like I said, you can use anything. Actually, the easier thing to use, I'll tell you right now, would be just a button. And actually, I'm going to do that. We're going to we're going to trade this out because I'm going to show you how to use a button and how to get your knot to be so it won't pull through your box. So let's. Just take this off of here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, this is just kind of a... Well, now you know what it's like if I have to sew anything, what kind of video it's going to be. All right, put that down. Put that down. Put a knot back in here. Um, You need the... Okay. You need to have a double thread. So, in case you don't know how to do a knot, line your threads up with each other. And then just put that in your finger like this. Put your thumb on it. Wrap, the, wrap it all the way around once and hold them together. And then you're going to roll. You're going to push your thumb. And what that does is that rolls those two together like that. And then just grab a hold of that and pull it down. And that will give you a knot. Okay, so that you have a double string. I'm just going to find a little button. I want one that will fit underneath there, and hopefully I can find one with just two holes. Because then I have two holes and two holes, and because this is red, we're good. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my button, and I'm going to come back through it again. I want to secure this piece of thread into my project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to where that knot is, separate my two threads and put my needle right right through there and then give it a pull now that is not going anywhere because the two threads are now locked together okay so now I can sew it into my project otherwise if you just sew it into your project that knot could work its way right through the cardboard especially with you going back and forth you know like opening and shutting your box so then I'm just going to go through my button and then go through it again I'm going to do that a couple of times just to kind of make those solid to each other okay 
So now we have a little bit of a spacer here that's going to hold it away from our box a little bit. And then we're just going to, at the center of our box, we're just going to sew it on. You can measure this exactly. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to say that's pretty good. And so I'm just going to go down through my cardboard. And then I'm just going to come up, find my hole, go through both buttons. And then we're just going to do this a few times to make it solid. And then on the back side, I either put glue, I, well, I always put glue, and then, um, but to make it look kind of nice, I'll put like maybe a little piece of decorative paper or a little piece of bling or something just to cover up your threads on the back. And you can do the same on the front if you want to. You know, you could put a little piece of bling on the front. I like the way it looks with the white thread. It just kind of, um, to me, gives it um, just a little bit of, I don't know, contrast, I guess. And so there we go. Now I used a two-hole button because that way my holes would line up and it made it a whole lot easier to sew this. But you could use a four-hole button and just kind of put it on an angle. So there we go. Now we've got this one on top. It's not tight, tight against our box. You do need to make sure that the button underneath is a little smaller than the one on top. And really what I should have done, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to show you how to do it in case you forget to do it like I did. I want to glue those two together a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really make that big of a difference, and um, probably it would be better to use the, why don't I use that, um, to use the fix-it-all adhesive because it's a super glue. Get the top off of there. I'm going to put just a little bit on my mat here and then I'm going to use a pin because there's no way to get that that tube in between these buttons no matter how hard I try and so then I'm just going to put a little bit of it on my pin and then just go between those two buttons and wipe it off and then I'm going to come to the other side too now this is going to take a little bit of time to dry but it's all sewn together so it's not going anywhere, but this is going to help those two buttons from sliding around on top of each other. It will make it so it's like one solid piece, which is what you really want to have. Okay, so now we have our top button on here. And we're just going to end that off. So I'm just going to go through the thread that's already been sewn. And that will leave a loop here. So then you go through the loop and pull and then do that one more time. And usually the second time I do it, I go through the loop twice, but just make sure that you go through the loop the same way. If you go through the loop on one side and then go through the other side, you're going to just take it out again, like I just did see. So you're going to want to go through the loop and then go through the loop the same way. And now you have a double knot. And there we go. Now that should hold really well because we're going to glue that down. Um, the knot should not come out. I can just use and put that upside down in case I, I am going to need it. So I'm going to put that upside down. There we go. Just put a little glue on that knot. There, just to glue the thread. Okay, so we've got that part done. And that's what that looks like. I think that's cute. And then I chose purple for the bottom. And I chose purple yarn. Um, twine. Now I want to show you about twine. Twine likes to get, and I may have shown you this in some other video, but twine likes to do that. And it's really hard to try and get that through the button. Now you can trim it off and make it so that it's, you know, kind of solid. And then try and go back and forth between there. But a lot of times what's going to happen is it's just going to keep, it's going to just split again. It's not going to fit in there. So what you do is you take a piece of tape, and I did bring tape out here. Here we go. Just a plain old piece of scotch tape. You know, whatever scotch is a name brand, so 
Oh my goodness. I did this the other day when I was making something else and I pulled off the wrong kind of tape. All right, so I'm gonna take a piece of scotch tape. I'm gonna take my, and this works with yarn, this works with anything that you're having that's, that's wanting to split um, and you're trying to get it through a small hole. So I'm gonna just put that on the tape and then fold the tape over it, just like that. So now it's encased in the tape. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut kind of next to it, but leave a little bit of the tape still taped to itself. And then I'm going to come up at an angle. It's okay if I cut some of those threads a little bit. And I'm going to go to a point right at the top. So now I have a little point of cellophane tape there. Now that tape is going to hold my string together, my twine together, and the little point is going to make it easier for me to put it through the hole and then pull it through the other side. I think I want this to be the front of my button and I'm just going to cut kind of a long piece of twine. I'm going to waste some but I just want to make sure that I have enough and I want my um, tails to be on the outside of my button so I'm going to go from the front to the back and then get a hold of that piece of tape. And if you can't get a hold of that piece of tape, like my sister always says things like, well, I don't have any nails, because she bites her nails. So, so she can't get a hold of it and pull it out like this. So if you can't do that, then just use your pliers, the little beading pliers that we got, and use that. And just put it right on the tape, and then just slowly pull it through. And there we go. So now we've got that. Now we want it to go through our box and come back up the other side. So we're going to put this down. We want to make sure that our button is under the lip, but in line with this button. You don't want it all the way up here to the top or otherwise you're not going to be able to wind your twine. So we want our button down here like this and that's underneath there. So I'm going to say right there and right there is where I need to put my holes. So here, and just don't poke yourself. And here. There we go. Now that's the smallest pokey tool. If you need to make your hole bigger, just go ahead and grab the next size pokey tool. Don't start with the big pokey tool because it will be even harder. You saw that was a little bit hard to push through there because it's a nice, nice, tough box. So um, just go up in size if you need to make your hole bigger like that. We could even make it a little bit bigger. Wouldn't hurt anything. So we'll take the biggest one that we have and we will put that through there. And these pokey tools are a little tiny screwdriver set like micro screwdrivers or something from the Dollar Tree. All right, so now we've done that, and now we're just going to go through here and pull it through, and then come back through the front, to the front, and if you're doing this a lot, if you're using your little, um, your tape needle, if you're doing it a lot, um, it may get bad or break to where you just need to put another one on. Just go back, cut it back behind that, and just start all over again. Alrighty. So here we go. So now we have this, and that's going to cover over there. You can also use stretchy string for this, and then just tie a knot in it. And um, if I was going to do that, I would put it with the loop part in the front. So I'd go from front to back instead of back to front. Make the loop in the front and then you could just take the little loop and put it over there, tie a knot on the back side. But I really like it when it has the windy part. So that's what we're gonna do for this one. And I'm gonna leave one tail long. And actually I want this one long. But the other one I need big enough to tie a little bow. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna tie a bow. You don't have to tie a bow, you can just tie a knot if you want to. I thought a bow might be cute. 
but we're going to do this and then if I don't like the way the bow looks, I'm going to pull the bow out and make it a knot. So I do it like that. And then because you're going to use this tail to wrap around, um, if you like the looks of the bow, you have to make it a double bow. But I don't want the bow parts that big, so I'm going to make them smaller. And then do I want to make it a double bow? Let me see what I think of that. I've changed my mind. I don't like the looks of the bow. I think it's just too bulky and too in your face. So that's coming off there. And I'm just going to tie a knot. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to cut one side short. And if you want to, what you can do with these is put a little, um, like little heart punch, like I did in the journaling on a budget with the um, inside dangles. And then this piece right here is going to be made to wrap around there. So that's wrapped around twice. That's plenty. And I'll just cut that right about there. Okay, so there we go. We can put a couple little dangles on there. Now, the only thing that we have left to do, if you want to decorate the inside, you can. You can decorate the outside. I think that the outside would look really cute. I just um, grabbed out some of my laces. And I think it would look really cute with this lace on here like this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach it on the edge. Take that out of my mouth. All the way around. And leave the inside part loose. I mean, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to go anywhere, but... I'm just going to put this and I hung it over the edge just a little bit so that I can trim it down exactly where it needs to be instead of trying to cut it straight the first time you know around because I never get anything straight so it's easier to cut it afterwards to make it match and your little snippets you can put in some kind of a collage or something so it's okay if you have little pieces left or tiny pieces like that one over there just go in the garbage around here you could also if you wanted to you could take this and you could wrap it to the inside I don't you know really see a need for that so I'm just gonna cut it right there and on this end I am gonna glue it all the way across just to keep it in place. So then I'm going to cut this one off. And put a little bit of glue on here too. Okay. All right, let's really quick do the other one the other side and then this video is getting really long I didn't expect it really to take this long but it's construction and construction takes a while and I have been fiddling with things not getting them right the first time so that's just kind of the way it goes sometimes So if it happens to you, you'll know you're not the only one. I always used to think it was me, but there are a lot of crafters out there now that are um, leaving some of their bloopers in there, and I really appreciate that because it really did let me know when I first started watching YouTube, and I kind of thought everybody did everything, you know, like I was the only one that was fumble fingers, and then because all of them were just, the videos were kind of perfect. And now people are showing that, you know, everything isn't perfect and 
And I really like that because I don't care. It doesn't matter who you are, how long you've been doing something. There are certain things that I do that I have done forever. And I can still mess them up. So, just like this one. Of course, I was really messing up the sewing on this one. So that's nothing new. Not for me. I always mess up the sewing part. My mother was such a wonderful sewer. She was a hand quilter. And her quilts were beautiful. But I didn't get that from her. There we go. And there we go. Isn't that just a cute little box? And like I said, if you want to just send it in Happy Meal, you can do that, um, you know, just like this. And then if you want, you can put some feet on it. But see, you can put a little dangle. Here, let's, let's try this. This is just some little diamantes that we got a while back. So we'll just put, because those, um, the little cords could go either way, um, I'm going to go ahead and put one on each side of the cord so that no matter which way it flips, it's got a little diamond on it. So there we go. Because, oops, I don't like the little strings to just like be hanging out there in the middle of nowhere sometimes not on something that's supposed to be a little bit decorative Ooh, that might not have been smart I just stuck those together and they're not even can I yeah I can move it there so that looks really cute on there like that so and this one just hangs and then this is the working one right here and then if you um, have it on your table and you undo it, this sits on your table instead of having it on here and having it be in your way. And so there's our little box. We'll put a little something in there. And now feet. Um, you can do feet on them in so many different ways. The little gems that we got when we made our, our storage tins, you can take those, put a little glue on one of the flat facets here, set it like that and just slide it right up to your box and what will happen is then it can then it can just glue right to the box just like that um, you know so you just have four of them and I would do two at a time put glue on one side decide where your box is going to be what's going to be the top or you know like how you want it to sit and then just slide them right up to your box and then you'll have two little feet there. When those are dry, do the same thing on the other side, exactly the same way. Just slide it up like this on the other side, and then you'll have four feet. Um, you can also use your um, the tongue depressors that we bought or the craft sticks that we bought. And I personally would cut them so that both ends were the same. And you can cut them so that they stick out or so that they don't stick out. And just glue them just like this wherever your bottom's going to be and glue it just like that and that will stop it from rolling and then you're going to want to paint that or stain that or you know do whatever you want to do with that but you can do that for feet um, or you cannot you know you can just have it like this so it doesn't it's not going to roll um, you know you can just leave it like it is but usually I put some kind of feet on it we could even you could make some of the little that we made again for the tins. Um, you could make this as a foot and slide it up there. Of course, you would make it on a smaller scale, make it shorter, or you could slide it right up to there. We could use the little plaster pieces that we that we made here. And, you know, you'd have to make sure that they're both the same height and put those there and slide them up. Or, if you want, you can put them on the bottom. Just put one here and one here. Again, like I said, they'll need to be the same size, and then they will. Then it will sit up. Let me see if I can find two that are about close to each other. So you could do it like that, and then you would glue that on, like that, and it would sit like this. You know, because they're they're big enough to um, to keep it flat, to to hold it up. So so you know, like I said, you can put any type of feet on them. And um, 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two of these. I'm just going to paint them and I'm going to glue them on. And then I will come back and show you how it works when I come back and I'll show you what we need for next week. Okay, I am back and this is how our little box turned out. I did go ahead and um, put some little feet with the plaster cabochons that we made. I painted them with nail polish. And so that's how it looks. It sits up really nicely. It doesn't go anywhere. And then you can just open it up like this and put whatever you'd like inside. So I hope that you liked this little tutorial. I had fun making it. Well, I guess I shouldn't say little. It's going to be pretty long. I did want to say one other thing that I forgot to say. If you don't want to sew buttons onto it, you can just use, um, what are these, brads? Um, you can just use brads, poke a hole, and stick it through there, and then tie your string around one, and then wrap your um, string around the other one. So you can just use brads if you want to instead of buttons. It's an easier way to do it. So for next week, we are going to need... Um, a picture frame. This one is a certificate, so it's eight and a half by 11, you know, regular paper size. And then we're going to need, this is a two pack of clip claws. They're like a, a hair, a hair thing. So we'll need a pack of those, some stickers, and a paper that you like the looks of. So I'm gonna use the silver that's in this pack here. And um, so, and you know, I got stickers then that will match with that. So if we're going to have one, two, three, um, four things for next week. So that will put a dollar in our bank. We right now have 56 in our bank, so that'll leave us with $57 in our bank. Time for us to start thinking about, um, you know, like maybe what other big item we may want to get um, or what type of supplies we might want to stock up on. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thank you very much for all of your support. I really do appreciate you watching my videos. Thank you very much for all of your nice comments, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for stopping by, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.